Today on The Hookup, I'm going to give you an in-depth look at these seven smart irrigation controllers to help you choose the system to automatically calculate the perfect amount of water for your yard based on things like soil type, sun exposure, plant species, and of course, weather. After putting these seven smart sprinkler systems through exhaustive testing and extensive research, I feel confident saying that most people should buy the Beehive Indoor. Like even if you just clicked on this video with no intention of upgrading your dumb sprinkler controller, you should probably buy it now. There are a few special cases where you may be better off with the Ratio 3 or the Beehive XR, but for the most part, the ease of use Features and value of the Beehive Indoor 8 are unmatched. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a full-featured PCB manufacturer. PCBWay can of course make your printed circuit boards that you've designed, but they also have a huge library of shared projects from different creators to browse through. So whether you're a professional electrical engineer or a tinkerer, PCBWay can help you make your projects a reality. Check out the link down in the description to help support my channel. Let me preface this test by saying that when switching to a smart irrigation controller, I wasn't looking for a standard timer-based system with a web interface. I wanted something more, something that was going to do all the heavy lifting for me and determine exactly how much water my lawn needed based on things like plant and soil type, sun exposure, sprinkler design, and of course weather. Automatic sprinkler systems have included rain sensors for decades, but a rain sensor only measures rain that's already happened, while these new systems take forecasted rain, humidity, and sun intensity into account. Lawn science is a real thing, and if you're not in the industry, you may not be aware of the complexities and intricacies involved in keeping your yard happy and healthy. And in fact, overwater in your yard can be just as bad as underwater in it. The goal is to have your sprinkler system do the work for you, so you can't possibly screw it up. Here's the lineup of smart sprinkler systems that I tested from least expensive to most. First, for as little as $25, you can get one of the original smart sprinkler systems, the SkyDrop 8-Zone Indoor Smart Irrigation System, which gives you a high-quality app with weather-based scheduling, a large color LCD for on-device control, and a super easy installation and setup. Does it seem too good to be true? Well, it is. Don't buy it. I'll explain why later. Next, for $66, is the Grow Sprinkler Controller that was recently acquired by the fertilizer company Scotts. Your $66 theoretically gets you a 7-zone indoor system with weather-based programming, but I was never able to get the Grow Controller connected to my Wi-Fi, even after an hour of troubleshooting. So my knowledge of it stops there, and I feel comfortable putting it firmly on my don't buy list. At $78, the Beehive Indoor 8-zone is made by Orbit one of the two big names in sprinkler systems. The Beehive 8 pretty obviously supports eight zones and it's meant to be installed indoors only. Like the Grow controller, the Beehive 8 has no on-device controls and it handles everything on the Beehive app. After that, we've got a significant jump in price up to the Beehive XR that comes in eight and 16 zone versions for 149 and 179 respectively. Also made by Orbit, the Beehive XR adds waterproofing for outdoor installations, some small LCD panels on the front of the unit to display current watering and weather information, and upgrades the wiring terminals for a more user-friendly experience. The Beehive XR also has a 900MHz radio in it for future accessories, but I didn't test any of those. Next is the Rainbird ST8 at $160. And if you're familiar with traditional sprinkler controllers, this probably looks really familiar. The ST8 is basically a standard high quality Rainbird irrigation timer with a small Wi-Fi add-on module to make it smart. In theory, I really like Rainbird's approach because you won't need to throw away the whole controller if the Wi-Fi unit goes bad. And you retain full control of your sprinkler system in the event of a Wi-Fi or internet outage. But the unfortunate truth is that using an external module makes communication between the app and the sprinkler system sluggish and clumsy. After that, we've got one of the pioneers of smart watering systems, Ratio, which has a huge market share in smart watering. Their Ratio 3 will cost you $179 for the 8-zone indoor controller with no on-device controls. But their products and customer support are top-notch, and it may justify this cost. And last, the most expensive option is the fully open-source Open Sprinkler, which I paid $190 for. Open Sprinkler is a fully open-source software that promises to free you from the cloud and give you local control for your irrigation systems, which it mostly does. But it turns out that you might not actually want those things. I'm going to be evaluating each sprinkler based on ease of installation, setup process, ease of use, app features, and reliability. Also take note of the EPA WaterSense certifications on these units. 
WaterSense certification will determine whether your new sprinkler controller is eligible for local rebates for installing water-saving irrigation systems. Like all rebates and a lot of government programs, the WaterSense program is often full of hoops and annoyances that may prevent you from getting them. So while I think rebates are worth mentioning, they are certainly not guaranteed and they may not be an important selection criteria for most people. For instance, in Hillsborough County, Florida, where I live, the up to $250 rebate requires that I not only have an existing inefficient irrigation system as determined by a third party evaluation, but also that the installation of the new controller is done by a licensed installer. Even though every single one of these systems could be easily installed by even the least handy homeowner in a matter of minutes. On that note, let's talk about ease of installation, which I personally think is relatively unimportant since you're only going to need to endure this headache once. But I understand that a difficult physical installation method may be overwhelming for some. So with that said, the SkyDrop installation was probably my favorite. The wires press fit into spring terminals and can be released by pressing the small rubberized buttons on the backer plate. After installing your sprinkler wires, the LCD front panel fits onto the backer plate, providing power and data. Super slick, but you still shouldn't buy it. The Ratio 3, Beehive XR, and Grow are fairly similar in that they have spring terminals to allow you to attach your existing sprinkler system wiring without any tools. The Beehive Indoor and the Rainbird, on the other hand, use screw terminals to attach each wire, so you're going to need a tool. None of these installations were difficult, and as I said, I firmly believe that anyone is capable of doing them, especially since there's no live electricity, because the power for your sprinkler valves is provided by the controller itself, which remains unplugged until you're done installing it. After the physical installation is complete, you'll need to get your new controller connected to Wi-Fi. The Beehive, Grow, and Ratio systems use Bluetooth to connect to the app and then transmit your Wi-Fi credentials over that Bluetooth connection. Honestly, I had a lot more trouble with this step than I was expecting, and the Beehive controllers were the only one that completed successfully on the first try. The Grow controller continually failed to connect to my Wi-Fi, and after an hour of troubleshooting and trying to force it to connect to different SSIDs on my wireless access points, I just gave up on it. The Ratio system also had an issue, but it was connecting, but then not able to communicate with the Ratio servers. And after two consecutive failures, the app automatically filed a customer service ticket for me, and it let me start setting up things in the app without a Wi-Fi connection. Somehow the problem just worked itself out after about 15 minutes, so I don't actually know what the issue was, but it wasn't a problem. Both the Rainbird and the Open Sprinkler controllers set up Wi-Fi by creating a Wi-Fi hotspot that you'll connect to with your phone to input your Wi-Fi credentials. And the process was easy and trouble-free in both instances. The $25 SkyDrop requires you to set up your Wi-Fi directly on the large LCD screen using the input wheel, which is easy and it works perfectly but you still shouldn't buy it. Once these controllers get connected to the internet, you get to see the real difference in their performance. As I mentioned earlier, I am not a lawn scientist, and you probably aren't either. I don't know the best practices for every season, climate zone, plant type, and weather pattern, but hopefully somebody at each of these companies does and is able to do all the calculations for me. Unfortunately, when setting up the Rainbird and the Open Sprinkler apps, it felt like a traditional timer system, and while I was hoping for some sort of setup wizard to help me out, I was more or less on my own to figure out how each setting worked and how they interacted. The Open Sprinkler app in particular had a ton of options, like using the Zimmerman or ETO weather delay patterns. But saying as I have no idea what either of those things are, I just left everything at the default. And as a result, when I finished the setup process, I wasn't really sure that I had done everything correctly. In contrast, the Beehive, SkyDrop, and Ratio were very easy to set up and inspired a confidence that the app would take care of the lawn science and automatically generate the best settings for my lawn. The Beehive app in particular walked me through the process asking specific questions about each zone's soil and plant type, slope, and sunlight, and it included the necessary reading if I didn't fully understand what it was asking or how I should answer. Maybe the coolest thing that the Beehive did was walk me through the optional process of using their irrigation catch cups, which are sold separately for about $20. The app tells you how to place the cups on your lawn, run the test, and then measure the contents to help Beehive understand your sprinkler head layout and flow to optimally water your yard. As for other features, all the systems offer some sort of automatic rain delay, but the Beehive and Ratio systems also include wind and soil saturation in their irrigation calculations. Beehive and Ratio were also the only systems that were able to easily adjust the weather station used for calculations, and the Ratio offers an average system using all the local weather stations in addition to choosing just a single station if you'd like. 
The Beehive and Ratio also both support external flow controllers by companies like Flume to measure the irrigation water usage and monitor for leaks and anomalies. As Beehive and Ratio continue to add new features, Skydrop's features have remained stagnant. And that has to do with the reason why I caution you from not buying the Skydrop this whole video. The problem with all of these controllers, even the open sprinkler, is that at their heart, all of them rely on at least some cloud services. They need to gather information about the weather in your area, compare it to your specific soil type, plant species, and watering regulations, and then determine your watering schedule. These services are the whole reason to get a connected controller instead of your old manual controller, but they require off-site servers that cost money to maintain, and a functional and free connection to them is not guaranteed forever. As I mentioned earlier, Skydrop was an early player in the smart sprinkler game, and despite an impressive product that I actually chose for myself, they didn't gain the market share to maintain their service and business model. So in a move that has become all too common for these dying companies, Skydrop attempted to take features that were advertised as free and included and put them behind a monthly subscription. After a failed deployment of this Skydrop Plus plan and a ton of understandable customer backlash, Skydrop ended up just rolling back the subscription plan and essentially shuttered their offices. The service is currently still working, but according to Skydrop themselves, their servers are being maintained by former employees who now have new jobs at other tech companies. Not only does this significantly decrease the security of their cloud service, but it also means that the issues will take much longer to resolve, and the biggest problem is that there's no guarantee that the service will be running a year from now, or even tomorrow. One last word on smart home integrations. If you're looking to use this with a smart home hub like SmartThings, Home Assistant, or HomeKit, the Ratio is definitely your best option. But for me, I don't think it's necessary. My sprinkler system turns on at 2 a.m. and it's finished before I wake up. I can't imagine ever needing to add sprinklers to an automation, but if you have something in mind, the Ratio is probably your best bet. So to recap, Ratio and Orbit Beehive are in a two-man race for market share in smart sprinklers. Between these two brands, I think the Orbit Beehive indoor controller delivers the most value by far at roughly a third of the price of the Ratio for almost the exact same functionality. If your controller is outside, the Beehive XR is slightly less expensive than the Ratio 3 with its outdoor installation kit, and I personally picked the Beehive XR because I don't need smart home integrations other than Amazon Echo and Google Home. Skydrop, Open Sprinkler, and Grow are firmly in my not recommended category, along with all the other smaller sprinkler startups, and I think they should be viewed as high risk when it comes to continued free and functional cloud connectivity. And while I think the Rainbird is a decent product, it's definitely not better than the Ratio or the Beehive, and it costs more. Links to all the controllers that I tested are down in the description. If this video helped you make your choice, please hit that thumbs up button to let YouTube know it was a good video. If I made a mistake or I missed something important, please leave a comment and I'll respond ASAP. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.